Well, uh, hello everyone and welcome. This is a very quick little follow on video to our week six hands on session just to talk a little bit more about our markdown and the R markdown format that we used for uh, this week's hands on section. So I'm here in our studio that's that's so up in here in the in the screen behind me and we're going to go and first off as always I'm going to open a new project just to keep ourselves seeing and make sure we're working in a clean environment. So I'm going to go and do that first. I'm going to do File, New Project. And this is good practice to do for each new section of work, new project, or you know, new week's class, for example, each time. And I'm going to go and talk about, I'm going to name this one, R Markdown Demo. So that's going to create a new folder. Uh, on my computer and R is going to reopen and it's going to be working inside that location. You can see here, uh, there's a, if you can see where my, the, my mouse is here, you can see that, that this is the actual path, what we call the path, where it lives on uh, your computer. So this is a little bit like, you know, the reason this is important, you know, not to digress too much away from our markdown is that we need to know where we are in, in your house. For, so for example, you know, we're all working at home during this, pandemic and if I have a book that is in the kids bedroom you know I've left it there reading stories and the kids are screaming they want to hear another story about uh, from that book I need to know where that book is so I need to go and say you know here I'm in the at the front door I need to know how to get there I need to go through the living room down the hall or through the kitchen and then to the kids room to find the book I need to tell um, are where the book is and that's just the same here i need to tell the computer often where this script that i'm going to make this r markdown file lives and what open a new project does in that location is it just says well you know don't worry about all those shenanigans that path to the book let's just go and transport ourselves into that kid's bedroom so we can read the book there okay and that's that's where we are we're in that location right away hopefully that made sense we'll talk a little bit more about file paths absolute paths relative path what these terms mean when we of our Unix because this is all a, a fast working on an operating system uh, that where R was first developed called Unix that is kind of blinkered. It can only see the files that are in a given room. It can only see the stuff that's in the room that the, the, the current process is operating in. And R is a process Unix uh, program just like any other and it's working in this room. So it can only access those books, not the ones that are in the kitchen or something else like that. You'd have to change into the kitchen to, to go and be able to read those. So with that little side note there, I'm going to go and say, let's go and uh, open an R Markdown file and, and show you what these look like. So I'm going to do file, new file, uh, uh, R Markdown document. And here it brings up this first window that gives you an option to change what you want to be known as your author and the title for the document. This is not the file name, but this will be the kind of uh, whenever you render your report whether it's in html pdf or word with these uh, these uh, click boxes or these these radio buttons below here it'll be that first big line right the header kind of one line that has the title of the document so i'm going to call this r markdown done demo and this will you'll see where this is and i'll r markdown strictly it has a kind of capital m here, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to just keep it as HTML for now, and we'll, we'll see how to change that in a little bit. And I've opened it up, and it creates this new file with this boilerplate text in it here. So all this text is is example to show us what typical R Markdown documents look like. So I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to notice that it's got this first six lines here. This is called the, the header of the file. Uh, because it's at the top, you know, just like your head is, and it's inside these three dashes here, and that demarcates the header zone. That's actually in a format called YAML. YAML, in case you're interested in, stands for yet another Markdown uh, kind of format. YAML, our language, yet another Markdown language. Uh, and the idea here is that we can tell the title, the author, the date, the output. We'll see later on that there's quite a few other things we can add to the header. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as is, and I'm going to click Knit on this document. It's going to ask me to save the document, because I haven't yet. You see the way it's still called on Titled 1 here. 
So it's going to say, do you want to save this? I'll say, yeah, I'm going to call it demo.rmd, push return, and then it'll go off and knit it. And what it's got is there's my title, the thing that I entered, my name, today's date, and it's got this uh, larger text. If I move this over, we'll see what's happening. This is this line where it says hash hash or pound pound symbol R Martin. This is a level two heading. If you're familiar you know, with Word and the formatting, then it's got my regular old text. And here is a link. You see, it's got this link here. And how's that rendered in the report? Well, as a real, HTML, as a real kind of HTML uh, reference link. Then it's got some more text. And you see, it says knit, and knit is in bold font. This one here, because that's the process that we want to get. If we put two stars around any word, it'll go in bold. Then we've got this kind of. Uh, a demarcated region where it's got some R code and some summary cards. What's that? Well, this is our code chunk. I'm going to switch over to that in a second and show you what that looks like. But it's also got below it the output of running that code. And that's the big win with R Martin is that we've got the ability, of course, to produce lots of different formats. And we'll see that we can make actually really beautiful reports, either as PDF or HTML documents and whole websites like the, like the class website, for example, using this kind of format. But at its core, what it's doing is it's taking code in these code chunks were donated by or uh, signified by these three kind of back ticks and then some curly parentheses that we'll talk about in a moment and then closes with another three back ticks. But it takes code and narrative text, the stuff you normally write, you know, your notes, for example, and combines them into the final document and not only just code but also the output so we've got the output here but we can include plots like there's a figure here okay so i'm going to uh, close this for a second and i'm going to change some of this font and say instead of this i'm going to say i can write any old text notes for myself here and i'm going to Put uh, old text in one in one thing, so that will go italic. And I'm going to do myself in bold because you know myself. I'm important. Full stop. And then I'll put in a little code chunk, and I can do that as we did in our uh, hands-on session today. I can click this button up here that says insert, and I can insert any type of uh, code, Python. Uh, SQL or whatever, I'm going to stick with R for now. And what that does is puts in this little uh, three back ticks for us with the R uh, here to tell the computer that we're actually writing R code. For example, if this was Python, we were going to insert some Python code, we just it would just say Python here, and then we could write Python code, for example, or, or any of the other code blocks, and it would be interpreted like that. I'm just going to do a you know, plot, let's just do one to 10. Type equals both. Let's do call equals blue or something like that. Okay, so I can type some R code. This is valid. R code will run. It'll make a very boring little plot that's got both points and lines and it's going to be colored blue here. And when I knit the document, that's going to be produced. But notice over here in the code block, I also have some extra buttons. We'll come to some of these in a moment. But the one that I'm going to click on first is this little green triangle here it says row run code chunk if i if i hover over it here you'll see it says run current chunk because that's what this little segment is called if i click it it'll go and produce that boring plot and show it in line in the document here and when i knit this document it'll produce an output that you'll see i can write any old text there's the italics remember with the one uh, the single st stars around it for myself. You see myself here is in bold. If you remember the myself is the two stars here. And there's my code rendered and colored and the output of the code chunk as well. Okay. So typically, you know, when we open one of these R Markdown documents, we um, we remove all the boilerplate text because we, we, you know, we don't need it. We can just delete all this stuff and we'll start uh, writing our notes for the session. So, so here I'm going to give it a level two heading. You know, let's pretend we're working in week six. This week we introduced 
this and that and covered another thing okay and then my code could be in here and my notes about about my thinking could be here okay so for example let's load up empty cars okay so let's see if we can get that and let's make a, a plot of let's do here uh, uh, we'll load up a library like gg if we have it installed in our computer any of these libraries ggplot and we'll go and do ggplot and we'll take empty cars and then we'll tell it some aesthetics so i'm going to map x to let's say um let's do miles per gallon and displacement or something like that mpg y equals and we'll do just a jump point for a scatter plot and sometime i'll even spell it correctly and we can run the, the code chunk and it'll produce a plot let's add one more thing to it let's do jump smooth for a smooth line that fits close to those data points and we can iterate same as we normally would let's see what it looks like in our knitted document so i'm going to knit and we get a a report with our beautiful plot in it here so this is HTML. I'm going to go and change it to make a PDF. And I've got an option here. I could just click this knit button and then say knit to PDF. Or if I just want to be able to do it straight off, I can just do PDF here to change the output format and knit again. And this time what I'll get here is a PDF document. So notice it's got the title, it's got the author, it's got the date, it's got the output, and it's got the, the plot. And we'll see uh, a number of different formats. Let's try the last one. If you've done this the first time and you click knit and you, you haven't followed along from last week, it's going to ask you to install the package knitter and R markdown that are required to do this. Um, but once you, if you follow along those prompts, it'll allow you to, to do that. I'm going to, uh, you could click, you know, Word document. I'm just going to change this to Word. If you have Microsoft Word open or available on your computer, then you'll be able to view this as a Microsoft Word document. Let's see. I haven't got Word open here, so we'll just be patient and wait for it to ask me all the silly questions that Word does. And here's a, a Word document of this thing with a beautiful figure okay so we'll, we'll we'll see that we're able to style these things make the word documents look like uh, you know reports with logos and, and formatting that you want and follow a template and the same is true for pdf and also for uh, the html document the default for this but for now the the main things to note are that we insert code chunks like this like if we just wanted to see the head so just the first few rows of this thing rather than the whole lot of it it'll show only the first six rows we would we put our our code within these code chunks and you can do that with uh, a number of ways you can do it by clicking the little insert button up in the toolbar here and say r or you could if you really wish you could type it out this is the back tick key so on my keyboard this is on the very top uh, left hand side and I would do three of these and then the, the curly parenthesis and I tell it it's R code and then I have to remember to close them so that's my code chunk and then you can write your R code in here so comments will need to be behind hash marks hash marks or pound symbols and then 
my code equals 120 sum my code and you can see how these work you can you can uh, you know, do a couple of things to execute them. You could highlight them as I've done here and send it down to the R console, to the R brain. You can click the little run buttons here, run selected lines, run current chunk, all these things. Notice this one that says run all chunks above. That means any code chunks that I have above my current place in this script will be executed. This is often useful when you want to redo some steps in your analysis and make sure you're all uh, following along in the correct order. You can use these. That button is also available right here, run all chunks above, or you can run just the current chunk with the little play button. And we'll see our answer, 210 in this case. Okay, with that, I'm gonna leave it here for this short video. And of course, comments, questions on Piazza are always very welcome, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.